In this video, we will introduce an essential statistical concept in data science, which is hypothesis testing, and walk through three common statistical tests, t-test, ANOVA test, and chi-squared test. Hypothesis testing is an essential part in inferential statistics where we use observed data in a sample to draw conclusions about unobserved data, often referred as the population. Some common implications of hypothesis testing include clinical research, A-B testing or feature selection in machine learning. There are four essential steps in hypothesis testing. Firstly, we need to define null and alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis, commonly noted as H0, is the claim that no effect, no difference, no relationship exists. Alternative hypothesis or H1 is contradictory to the null hypothesis and it claims that relationships exist. It is the hypothesis that we would like to prove right. However, a more conservational approach is favored in statistics where we assume null hypothesis is true and try to find evidence to reject the null hypothesis. The second step is to choose an appropriate statistical test. Common types of statistical testing, including t-tests, z-tests, ANOVA test and chi-squared test. When examining the relationship between numeric and categorical variables, we can use t-test, chi-squared test and ANOVA test. t-test is commonly used to compare a categorical variable with two groups against a numeric variable when the sample size is small. I will explain more in details later in the video. Z-test has very similar application to T-test, but it is preferred when the sample size is more than 30. ANOVA test is used when comparing the values of two or more groups. Chi-squared test is for comparing the relationship between two categorical variables. Whereas correlation test is used for examining the relationship between two numeric variables. The third step is to calculate the p-value. How p-value is calculated varies primarily based on which statistical test is chosen. Firstly, based on the mean and standard deviation of the observed sample data, we are able to derive the test statistics value. Then calculate the probability of getting this test statistics given the distribution of the null hypothesis, we will find out the p-value. The last step is to determine the statistical significance. P-value is then compared against the significance level, also known as alpha value, to determine whether there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. The significance level is a predetermined probability threshold and commonly 0.05 is used. If P-value is larger than the threshold, it means that the value is likely to occur in the distribution when the null hypothesis is true. On the other hand, if lower than significance level, it means it is very unlikely to occur in the null hypothesis distribution, so we make the decision to reject the null hypothesis. Now let's dive into the details of t-test, ANOVA test, and chi-squared test. There are three common types of t-test. One sample t-test, compare the mean of one group against a constant value. Two sample t-test, compare the difference of means between two groups. Paired sample t-test, compare the difference of means between two measurements of the same subject. For example, if I would like to test whether recency value, which is the number of days since customer's last purchase, contributes to the prediction of response. Whether the customer accepted the offer in the last campaign. I can use a two-sample t-test. The first sample would be the recency of customers who accepted the offer. The second sample would be the recency of customers who rejected the offer. Histogram or dist plot in Python is a great visual representation of t-test. It appears visually that positive responses have lower recency compared to negative responses. To quantify the difference, let's follow the steps in hypothesis testing and carry out a t-test. To test the difference between two independent samples, two-sample t-test is the most appropriate statistical test. The test statistics follow student t-distribution when null hypothesis is true. The shape of t-distribution is determined by the degree of freedom, calculated as the sum of two sample size, minus two. There are some handy functions in Python calculating the probability in a distribution. For any x covered in the range of the distribution, pdf, x, calculates the probability density function of x, which can be represented as the orange line below, 
and CDF, X, is the cumulative density function of X, which can be represented as the cumulative area. In this example, we are testing the alternative hypothesis that recency of positive response minus the recency of negative response is less than zero. Therefore, we should use a one-tail test and compare the t-statistics we get against the lowest value in this distribution. p-value can be calculated by applying the CDF function to t-statistics in this case. t-test independent is a handy function for independent t-test in Python that has done all of these for us using few lines of code. Since p-value we got here is 0.012 is smaller than the threshold 0.05, we can say that it is statistically significant, based on the collected sample. A lower recency of customer who accepted the offer is likely not a curve by chance. Here I use Plotly to visualize the p-value in t-distribution. Hover over the line and see how point probability and p-value changes as the t-statistics value changes. If you want to play around with this interactive chart, check out my blog, the link is in description below. Now that we know t-test is used to compare the mean of one or two sample groups. What if we want to test more than two samples? We can use ANOVA test. ANOVA examines the difference among groups by calculating the ratio of variance across groups against variance within a group. Larger ratio indicates that the difference is a result of the group difference, rather than just by random variations. Null hypothesis in ANOVA is that no difference among three groups. Alternative hypothesis is that there is difference between at least two of them. I found box plot to be the most aligned visual representation of ANOVA test. ANOVA test also follows F distribution that is defined by degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is calculated by number of total samples, n, and the number of groups, k. To calculate the p-value of the f statistics, we use the right tail cumulative area of the f distribution, which is 1 minus cumulative density of the f statistics. To easily get the f statistics and p-value using Python, we can use the function f one way. The last statistical test we are going to introduce is chi-squared test which is mainly used for testing the relationship between two categorical variables. The null hypothesis of chi-squared test is two categorical variables are independent. And the alternative hypothesis is that they are dependent. The underlying principle is that if two categorical variables are independent, then one categorical variable should have similar composition when the other categorical variable changes. Stacked bar chart is a great visual tool to examine the dataset before carrying out chi-squared test. If these two variables are completely independent to each other, or in other words, null hypothesis is true, then the proportion of orange and blue area should be the same across all groups. On the other hand, if the proportion is not consistent, it may suggest that dependencies exist. To calculate the p-value, we need to compare the chi-squared statistics against the chi-squared distribution. It is represented as the right tail cumulative area, which is 1 minus cumulative density of the chi-squared statistics. We can use function chi-squared contingency to get the chi-squared statistics and p-value given the contingency table of two categorical variables. Then to compare the p-value against 0.05, we can tell if there is evidence to reject the null hypothesis that two categorical variables are independent. Hope this video helps you to have a better understanding of three main types of statistical tests. Look forward to see you in the next one.